of our virtuals, because it's one of the other uh, decoration companies on the market uh, with constantly and uh, nice uh, I'm technical manager over there, which means that I'm handling most of the technical integrations with the um, The objective of today's presentation is to show how integrating with clients backend system can improve the actual integration performance uh, in order to have a better performance. So, first and foremost, what do we actually do? We are not making fake humans. That's not our job. We are doing intelligent intelligence. So we are still a computer system. Um, as was mentioned before during the uh, conference, the objective is not to trick the user into thinking that is talking to a virtual agent, to human. We want it to be clear from the start that is talking to the computer. One of the reasons that it allows us to manage expectations when you talk with the computer, you don't expect the same things as when you talk with the real. And it's not as easy as it seems. I must tell you that we still get the occasional resume from people who want to be a virtual agent. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. So one of the difficulties we have is even making the, uh, the user understand that he's talking to the computer. And we try to make it very clear. Hello, I'm Emma, I'm a virtual agent, I'm an automated agent, or whatever. And still we have people who think that they are talking to a live person. So that's one thing that still needs to be figured out. Even if we put like a cartoonish character, people think they are talking to a live person. And for instance, with eBay, one day I read a dialogue where the guy was saying, well, I bought a chainsaw. You do what you want. And it's not working. And then he got into telling the virtual agent why it wasn't working. You know there's a leak, I think that's why it's not working. Okay, what do we do with that? So, you see, in our case, what we do is really make sure that we provide good service, but we need to manage those expectations, because otherwise the user will start doing stuff that's useless, that we cannot use, that we cannot uh, act on. And then they will be frustrated because they lost their path. So that's one of our core competencies. It's making sure that we get the user to resolution without making it lose any time. And always getting into a solution, even if it's not us. So what's our core, uh, what are our core mission? We don't try to make uh, an agent that does everything, that talks about everything. We are mainly focused on customer support. So this is a very specific mission, and it's a narrow scope. Meaning that when we were talking about 10,000 uh, knowledge items this morning, this is far more than what we have in our more complex agents. If we have 1,000, it's already a lot. And of those 1,000, if you take the first top, uh, top 100, you get 90% of your needs. So what you have to realize is what I will be presenting today is slightly different from chatbots. You have chatbots that are trying to act as humans. And then you have virtual agents that are being used on websites that are mostly used to act on a specific mission. So in some sense, it's easier because you have the context. We were talking about questions this morning where if you ask the question out of the group, then there are ambiguities. Well, where is the, the clock? Well, look, it's on your, on your desk. In our case, we don't care about it we know that we're in the context of our client's website or our client's products. So it makes it a lot easier when it comes to interpreting uh, the questions. It doesn't make it easier in the end because there are still a lot to, to handle, but still. Um, and one other thing that needs to be, uh, to be told is we are not the end solution. We won't be answering every question. So at some point, we need to pass the ball, pass the help data. And that's one thing that's very important, it's providing alternatives when we are not succeeding in solving the user issue. <coughs> and one thing that's nice about our, our system is that we know when we don't know. So once we reach one of those cases, we can still escalate the user to a live channel. That way, whatever happens, we are still leading the user to a solution, which is really the main point. Because if you look at the performance of a virtual agent, if you say, I want to drop call rates, it's easy. Don't keep the phone number. You have zero calls, you're fine. But the problem is that what you want is 
dropping the call rate, keeping customer satisfaction up, and having <coughs> high resolution rate. So the problem is slightly more complex than that. And that's where we try to, to, uh, to act. We act as a, a channel strategy, meaning that we select the optimal support channel for the given user problem. If it's a live chat session, then fine. Let's send the user to live chat, but let's do it only when it's worth it, when it's needed. That way, you're saving money because when you look at a customer sign, they have like 80% of their calls or contacts that are very simple questions that could have been solved by the So really, we act as a first line of defense. And then, based on the outcome of the data, we go and we escalate the user to the right channel if needed. So now you can ask me where does integration fix it? I mean, we could just talk with the agent, that would be fine. Uh, except that it's not that simple. If we talk with the user for 10 minutes, it's the same thing as on the phone. I mean, you don't want to spend 10 minutes on the phone. If it can be solved in two minutes, it's even better. So there are a few steps where, where integration with those client systems fits. Uh, doing data. In order to get resolution faster, what we usually do is avoid asking the information we are supposed to come. For instance, if a client has an account with a customer, with a customer, then it would be much better to get the info from his account rather than asking him again. Uh, also, asking information is usually a great cause for drop rate. Okay, what's your product? I don't know. But like next. So here you see that those integrations will have uh, improve the resolution rate just by allowing the user to get through. After the data, um, since we sometimes cannot solve the user issue, then we have to, to send the, the user to a CSR. In this case, what we want to do is optimize the CSR performance, make sure that if he does something, he does it in an efficient way. Meaning that if we can send the the user to the right person that will be competent to solve this problem, good. If we can reduce the time it takes the CSR to solve the user problem, even better. That's another aspect. And last but not least, and I would say that's the main point that needs to be handled with time, it's analytics. How do we measure performance? We've been talking about measuring the humanness of the interactions, but in the end, when you talk to, to a company, well, it boils down to hard cash. And in this case, it means that, okay, how many contacts did I save? So usually what we do is we interface with them in order to, be actually, to actually measure in a precise way, and faithful way, how many contacts did we save. You could just measure what happened inside the data, but when you measure what that, you have really an agent-centered view of what's going on. That's not all of the story. The user is on the website. The user continues his browsing session after that. The user might go to the contact us page after that, which means that we might fail even if we get to an answer. We have cases where we give the, the user an answer, and then he goes to the contact page. Is it because the answer is wrong? Not necessarily. Sometimes it's just because he doesn't like the answer. And he wants to, have, to talk to a live person to tell them, well, I don't like it. Do something. I want to talk to your manager. So that's another aspect. Performance is not only uh, the actual uh, exact, uh, uh, truth, well, exactitude in, in the answer. The answer might be perfectly fine, but still not prevent problems. So that's something that needs to be measured in order to be able to act on it. If you don't know it, you cannot do anything. Right. So what I do next is I want to give you a few examples of the type of integrations that can be done with the client and what kind of benefits we can take out of that. Um, the first one is uh, during the dialogues, how we can skip steps, avoid asking useless use questions to the user, um, and go to the solution faster. Um, the example I want to take is eBay. We have a peer trade company, eBay site, and a lot of questions are are similar to, I want to cancel a bid. I, I put a bid on something, but in the end, I don't want it. 
what I learned is that there are a lot of complex rules that govern whether or not you can cancel a deal. For instance, are there more than 12 hours before the end of the auction? Or is it uh, an incorrect Dutch auction? Those kinds of things. And what, what often happens on the website is you have one FAQ that contains all that. And you need to do the, the logic by yourself. You will see, OK, you can cancel a deal only if this, 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 or that, or not this, or the captain is older than 25, or the win is whatever. So here the important part is that by accessing the account information of the user, we'll be retrieving the information about the object, about the bid of the user. And then based on that, we can get directly to the right answer. And when I say answer, I'm not saying this list of possible outcomes. I'm saying this one case that corresponds to exactly what the user did. I want to cancel a bit. Yes, you can. I want to cancel a bit. No, you cannot, because there are more than 5,000 rules per and so on. So really, we can say easily four steps, for instance, in the eBay case, because they have very complex uh, rules on what you can do or what you cannot do. And this has improved dramatically the drop rate. Because before that, we have to ask the user, OK, what is your item number? Then they have to find the item number, they have, they have placed a bid on. If they were there in the first place, it means that finding the item number wasn't really the their kind of deal. And then we have to ask them, okay, how long, how long ago did you place to be an answer? So it was, it was a mess. It was better because you got to an answer that was exactly uh, the answer meant for the user, but still, it took a lot of efforts on the other user part. Here, it's the opposite. The user has nothing to do, it just tells us it logs in, which is fine. I mean, we have to assume it does it. And then the nice thing is by using the integration with the system, we can access the list of items the user has placed a bin on or is selling. So instead of asking him an item number, we can just display a list of the items he placed a bin on and ask him to click on it, which you will agree is a lot better. So that's one example. Um, the next step actually is, well, do it for me. We can tell you how you can cancel it, but actually we could cancel it for you. Um, this, this has, uh, well, people have uh, mixed feelings about that because they're, they're supposed to do it on the side. And one, one approach would be to educate the user to do it on the site, meaning you want to cancel your deal for this item, OK, and let you go to your, your account, you click on the item, you open the item, and then you click on the cancel bit button. But we, have, we can say that the, the websites are complex, and this morning we, we talked about it, but still, at some point, websites are designed in the correct way, more or less. And we still have some people who are completely uh, we cannot just work with them, and they will never get to it. So in this case, education is not a waste of time, but it's not a good option. At some point, we, we just need to do it for them and let them get through instead of making them feel the pain. So same thing, by accessing the, those APIs from, from eBay, we were able to just cancel the bit for the user. It tells us, yeah, I want to cancel it. Fine, we'll do it. And this is the same thing that happened with the CSR. If they were to call eBay and identify, in the end, the CSR, would, they would do, the, do it for them. So we are not doing anything different than what the CSR would do. Another example, um, we have um, an e-retailer in France, whose name is Fnac. Um, they have a, an account page with an order tracking page. Fine. But we still have a lot of customer support questions. Uh, when my order arrived, 